Okay, uh, I'm just showing you how we um, pack her medications, her milk, whenever we're on the go. Um, if, if we're going to be away for a few hours, I, I use this little small ice pack, uh, lunchbox, I mean, Dr. Brown. And I just put a few ice packs there and her milk for the next, uh, you know, I already measured it. Um, for the next time her feet is on and I take a few flushes with me and some med and the medication you know that she needs to take while we're out um, and I also usually in the mornings I prepare all her medications throughout the day so I have them ready um, and I, I keep a schedule you know like the time and uh, what happens at each hour and what kind of medication she gets at each hour um, But one thing that I uh, I would like to share I know I struggle a lot um, Finding little caps for my syringes so my infusion company they send me this uh, Lure lock tip is this kind of tip of a uh, syringe like screwed screw on and but I asked them if they have the tops and they told me that they don't provide that and so I used to uh, had a hard time you know whenever putting the medication in my lunch box it will like leak or make a mess so uh, whenever I prepare the TPN they also send me um, extra things to add on the TPN bag like heparin uh, and um, like a vitamin K and they come already pre-filled like a syringe pre-fill with this kind of top on it so what I do is I take these little tops and I save them um, and of course I wash them and everything and then I can reuse them so that has been working good for us um, and it fits on this type of syringe like uh, again make sure you get this one um, who are locked it also I found that like the saline flushes you know the tops or the heparin flushes these can also fit in this type of syringe so you can also save these tops and use it um, you know for for your medications because they you know these little things come in handy instead of ordering online I know some people will order them online but you know I'm I try as much as I can to reuse everything and you know save money <laughs> um, so anyway just sharing the little tip um, but yeah this is how I take her milk and of course uh, in her backpack I take uh, her milk pump and uh, you know a feeding bag so whenever we're on the go I just put this in the feeding bag I give her her medications I flush her tube so let's say just to give you an idea um, how to do that and I recommend those well I was recommended by my doctor um, you know you double check with your doctor uh, um, to get uh, pills in, uh, medications in pill form and tablet form instead of um, liquid form because apparently the liquid form uh, has usually has sugar in them and you know with the short gut kids sugar makes them dump um, so if you can get it in pill form and with no sugar added or whatever uh, that will be best if you can do that um, so now a lot of our medications we have switched to pill form um, and uh, you know we bought a little uh, pill crusher thing let me show you and you can get these at CVS too uh, it's this. so you put the pill in there and then you just crush it yeah. you, you screw it on and you crush the pill so I recommend that that has worked for us at least um, and uh, that's it so see here I have my bag full of uh, syringe caps that I save <laughs> so all right I just wanted to share 
that little tip with you and that's all if you have any other suggestions please share them thank you bye so i wanted to talk about uh, some of the medications that uh, we have been dealing with um and you know just to give an idea to other parents uh, uh, about uh, you know the medications that many of the short gut kids uh, have to um, use um, as you know many of them um, they, they need extra vitamins um, so like in our case uh, we were prescribed iron um, however the iron can be very hard on the stomach on many of these kids at least for my daughter it was uh, too much and so it will make her throw up right after I will give her the iron she will throw up um, so the way that we dealt with that was uh, we broke it down um, let's say the dosage was I don't know three mls a day um, so what we did was we'll, uh, we, we will give her 1.5 ml in the morning time after she had some milk in her tummy um, and then we will give her the rest another 1.5 um, later in the afternoon or at night time you know we would like spread it out and that seemed to help and she wasn't you know so prone on throwing up uh, I know at one time she, my daughter was NPO and she didn't have any milk in her system so uh, it was pretty tough uh, so I had to break it down even more like you know divide it in three times or four times to give her very small dosages um, throughout the day uh, to um, to help her not, you know, to throw up. So so far, that's that's one trick that I learned. <laughs> uh, the other one, um, other medication that we are dealing with is um, motility medications. In our case, is erythromycin, which is used for uh, the motility in the stomach, is to help empty the stomach uh, faster. And the other medication is Alcumentin, uh, uh, that also helps with the motility in the intestines. Um, now, both of these medications are antibiotics, um, so they um, so far they've been working for us uh, I did notice with the retromycin it will make her tummy is sometimes a little bit upset like sometimes she will like throw up afterwards um, so you know but uh, I've been doing trial and error <laughs> try to see how to spread it out throughout the day you know because like I have to give a retromycin like three times a day uh, and then they went on twice a day um, so I had to go uh, and try different times like during the day during the night after a feed before a feed you know and of course we know that antibiotics they work better uh, when your belly is a little bit full you know it's not good to take antibiotics when you have an empty belly um, so I had to do a lot of trial and error to to see when it was the right time for her to take these kind of medications and to avoid uh, vomiting so that's something that you have to uh, you know play around with uh, another medications that many of these short gut kids have to deal with is um, bacteria overgrowth uh, medications um, in our case, we use uh, Flagyl and uh, Bactrim, uh, and we uh, 
switch them. You know, one month we'll do Flagell, another month Bactrum, and another month Flagell and Bactrum, and so on, just so that uh, they don't come so resistant. The bacteria that come too resistant to these type of medications. Um, and we do it like the first 10 days of the month. Um, Flagell has been working fine for my daughter. Uh, however, Bactrum, I did notice that it made her dump a lot. Uh, she has an ostomy, so she would like, uh, you know, just poop out a lot <laughs> in her ostomy uh, to the point that I had to like replenish uh, her with extra, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, extra electrolytes because she was just getting so dehydrated so much because she was just pooping out everything uh, that's what I noticed in my daughter now it might not happen to your kid but it's just something to be aware of and to you know see what works what doesn't work for your kid and you know talk to your doctor and see if they can provide another medication uh, also um, like I was saying earlier, um, I noticed uh, my doctor said that uh, it's better to give them uh, medications that are in tablet form because they tend to have less sugar in them or no sugar at all or try to get medications that have no flavors, no sugar, no, you know, always uh, um, try to avoid that because that also can... Uh, play a role in, into the vomiting or dumping, um, which I did not know, uh, I found that out afterwards. Uh, and also we do probiotics, my doctor uh, recommends uh, probiotics, um, and just keep in mind that to give probiotics between two hours or like four hours after you give an antibiotic so um, so that the probiotic can have an effect <laughs> uh, work their magic you know and doesn't get uh, thrown off by the antibiotic that you know your kid will be taking so try to spread them out you know away from each other like two to four hours apart if you can um, so it gets tricky to find the right schedule the right medication schedule with also the feeds um, so again it's a trial and error and you, you you have to observe your kid and see how your kid reacts you know throughout the day uh, you know when they are on feeds and when they are not on feeds and when you give them this medication or so on I had it took me I don't know a month almost two months to come up with a good uh, system routine that will not make her throw up um, at least not throw up as much she still does experience some uh, vomiting but it's very minimal it's almost like a spit up um, my doctor uh, says that uh, anything um, that is 30 ml or up is considered uh, a vomiting. Um, anything less than that is just, you know, spit up or especially anything fi 15 ml and below is like a spit up and anything over that then it gets a little bit like, okay, it's more like a throw up, a vomit. Um, so. Uh, it's important to keep track of those uh, things throughout the day, you know, how much uh, your kid is um, vomiting or, or pooping or urinating too. So, uh, uh, you know, I think I showed in another video how we keep track of all of that. Um, so I just wanted to share those little tricks that I have uh, picked up on. Um, and just to make you aware uh, to, you know, that try different um, ways of giving medications to your kids 
and in a way that uh, won't hurt them as much or make them vomit <laughs> um, so that's all if you guys have any other recommendations anything else that I uh, would like to point out uh, let me know how how it has been working for you guys medication wise um, again we're still new to this uh, whole shortcut world so we're, we're, we're learning as we go and, but I just wanted to share what what I have learned with other parents that might be uh, starting out so all right Thank you. Bye-bye. One more thing that I forgot to mention was uh, as I was doing the trial and error type of things with the medications, I also found that uh, at first they were giving her retinatine through her IV um, and that was to help with the stomach acids and supposedly help uh, decrease the vomiting uh, that was my understanding and so she she was taking that through the IV for many many months um, but because you know her she started vomiting and vomiting uh, talking to the doctor uh, they recommended maybe uh, she had her body had 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 um, gotten used to the that medication and, and was not uh, doing anything for her anymore so the doctor decided to stop that and to uh, prescribe Prevacid and give it to her through the G-tube which is also uh, uh, you know it helps with the vomiting and the acids in the stomach uh, so I tried that it was like once a day type of thing and uh, but I could see that every time I would give it to her, she would like throw up a lot. Uh, you know, like like her tummy wasn't uh, uh, tolerating it. Uh, and I, I, you know, I tried it for many weeks, but I could see that that it was just becoming worse and worse. And so I decided to stop it, and uh, and then I start seeing a big difference. Uh, her, her vomiting started decreasing in the amount and, and the, the times during the day so I mean for some kids it works but uh, for others it doesn't at least for my daughter it didn't so just something to keep in mind uh, you know when uh, dealing with these medications just you know try different ways alright that's all thanks bye